All right. Hello, Pal Talkers, and welcome to the In Touch Weekly Show. So happy to have you join us today. Uh, everybody always asks right when they come into the room, what is this room about? And this room is about the latest from In Touch Weekly. I'm the senior editor, Dorothy Cassisari, for In Touch Weekly. We'll be talking a lot of fun celebrity news and gossip. And also today we have a really special guest that's going to talk to us a little bit about something that everybody loves, which is wine. Uh, and we have Stephanie Jackenthal, who is the author of Wanderlust Whining. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that and your expertise. Uh, and also, I want to invite everybody to please raise your hand if you have a question. Or, um, you know, I'll be monitoring the message board, but it's hard. I don't want to take my attention away from my lovely guest here by staring at the message board, um, waiting to see, uh, you know, what everybody has to say. So, if you do have a question or a comment, raise your hand. We'd love to hear your lovely voices. Uh, so, Stephanie, yes. welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Well, we're very, very happy to have you. So, I got I got an advanced copy of your book a yes. few weeks ago, and I looked through it. And I have to tell you, I just, you know, I always talk about wine on this show. The regulars that tune in know this about me. Um, but I was, uh, I was actually just talking to somebody today who I work with, who's leaving for San Francisco awesome. and heading to Napa and Sonoma. And it kind of brought back some memories of my Napa trip. Um, I went out there for my 30th birthday. Don't tell anyone how old I am. But I went out there for my 30th birthday in September and had a fantastic time. There is really nothing that I love more than a glass or a bottle of wine, and, <laughs> or, two. Or, 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 you know, an entire, like, liter of wine, um, and, uh, and, you know, and nice, good people to talk to, and a nice ambiance. So, tell us a little bit about this book, and how you came about being the author of a fabulous wine country companion. Um, you know, I wrote the book, as I say, uh, for myself and my friends. You know, I grew up, and I was both athletic, and we had a wine cellar in my basement, so I grew oh. up, like, learning about wine. And then I found as I was traveling to do either bike racing or triathlon or whatever I was sort of in the middle of, that there was wine country around. Right. And wine country is beautiful. I mean, whenever you get into wine country, I mean, what is more fabulous than, like you said, if you're in Napa or Sonoma or Oregon. And so I started to, um, to write stories because um, I was writing story. I had written this big story on bike touring through Colorado wine oh, country. Oh, cool. So, um, oh, oh, I love biking and doing wine tasting at the same time. Yes. It's such a fun activity, though. You have to be very careful. You have to be really <laughs> careful. Like my, I, I prefer to actually go biking. And then go wine tasting. Okay. Or take your real bike out and go ride and then take a like, little putt putt. We had like little like like basket bikes and right, stuff. Right. So um so I started to like to talk to a lot of my friends who were athletic and it turned out everybody really was into wine. And the thing is is if you go out to wine country and you start drinking right away, you're just trash, right? <laughs> so true. what's better than getting true. up in the morning and doing a fabulous, you know, hike or bike or kayak? and then going to wine country, or blending the two, you know, mm. like, and so I started to do research, and there were all these companies that could take you, you know, you can go to Vino and Vinyasa, so you do yoga in a, in a wine field. That's a fun isn't thing to that, pair together. Isn't that great? Yeah. You know, in, um, in Virginia, in these off-brand, there's a company um, called r and it's River and Trails, and they'll actually take you kayaking, and then take you to wine tasting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and so I just, the more I started to research, the more I found, and the more I found that people were traveling, and they wanted to do it, so um, so I sort of felt well, wanderlust, you know. Let's go wanderlust whining. I love it. Yeah, and it was really neat. And as I was researching it, I met the coolest people. Like one of the guys was really neat at Vista Hills Winery. And where went, is that? That's in Willamette Valley in Oregon. Okay. And they make great Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris. So I wanted to um, to do biking because it's so pretty out there. But I wanted to have maps, and I started to talk to him. And so he's like the winemaker, but in his former life. He was a cartographer who oh. makes maps. Okay. He made me the most gorgeous biking maps of, like, riding in Willamette Valley. Like, three of them with, like, elevation gains and cue sheets. And so, you know, I really wanted the book to be, like, you were, like, one-stop shop to, to, like, planning a fun, active vacation and around the United States. It absolutely is. Um, what are some of the highlights? If you had to kind of, I mean, geez, this book is how many pages? Almost 300. If you had yeah. To pick, if you had to pick one kind of highlight, your favorite thing, I know it's a hard question, but is there one? Um, you know, there's there's a couple depending on where we are. Um, you know, Vino and Vinyasa for sure is one of them. 
And then I love Santa Cruz. So, you know, you can go surfing or kayaking and then go over to like Bonnie Dune and, and drink there. And, right. Um, so that I is really, our really neat. our computer connection. I don't know what's going on here, but oh, I, I can't. I can't see the computer screen. I don't even know if we're still, if we're still live. Huh. Um, Gary, whenever you have a chance, come on in here and give us a hand. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> I mean, so, the screen is black, so I can't see it or anything. Oh, good. But anywho, so um, so yeah, so um, so that was like that's definitely one of them. Oh, Gary's back. <laughs> <laughs> My lovely assistant. <laughs> here you go. No idea, it just went black. Okay, so yeah. so um, so that that's really great. And then um, in Washington State, you can do these really beautiful hikes past waterfalls and all that, and then drop in and you know back into um, into California. You know, I mean mm. that's just the best. You can do stand up paddle boarding, and then hit all of the different wineries. And you know, it's nice to hit the smaller areas as well. You know, in Santa Barbara, they have this beautiful, just like you can do like um, hiking. And, uh, kayaking and then do a glider. Like you can, oh, you wow. can actually go onto a glider and like you get to press the button for what it's and, like everything just connects. Right, right. So it was yeah, it's it's really great. And then I wanted to stay local too because we're in New York. Mm -hmm. So I did all through New York um, state. So when you go out to Long Island, again you can do like these really great mountain bikes or go up to the gunks. You know, and uh, if you're a rock climber. So I sort of tried to hit everybody's path. So this must have been a really fun process writing this book. Yes. I mean, how much did you travel? Did you did yeah. you visit all of these places? You know, I... Where you I, had people that visited them. I visited um, most of them. Right. And some of them I had visited prior to, um, to writing the book. And some I specifically went out to do. And then a couple I just couldn't get out there, so I had them send it to me. So oh, how um, can you do all of it, yeah, you know? Yeah, because it covers, like, pretty much major and some minor like wine countries across the United States. So I have to admit, I did not get to Texas, but I did drink killer Viognier from uh, from Texas oh, I love by Becker. Viognier. It was really great. Um, I love how Napa Valley is the very first chapter. Yes. That's really yeah. exciting. Was there a reason that you put it first? You know, it's the biggest and the most well-known, and it's definitely been like the... Um, it definitely just offers the most in terms of wine rate and also the most recognition. Definitely. And then also it wasn't as, as outdoor friendly as I thought it would be, so it was a big challenge. So I did get to go um, stand up paddle boarding on the Napa River. Oh, wow. And it was low tide, so it was really fun. That's but, um, cool. Yeah. yeah um, so I'm seeing really here that you have a, a bottle of Silver Oak. That was one of the yes. wineries that I just recommended to my friend today because we really enjoyed Silver Oak when we visited. Really yeah. interesting story there. Now, we did a, a hot air balloon ride when we were you there. You did. Which oh, was really cool. Great. It was my first time ever doing that. Um, and we got really, really lucky. Oh, Robert Sinsky, too. I visited, I visited I love Robert their Sinsky. Pinot Noirs. Yeah. Did you get to Farniente? Farniente has this gorgeous no. car collection. No, we oh. didn't. We wanted to. We wanted yeah. to. But um, yeah. now, let me ask you, is there a, possibly a book in the works for Burgundy? <laughs> yeah, uh, I would for, love that. You know, it's Italy's wine country. Yeah, you know, that is my goal, is to um, to write part two, and right. then write part three. So I'm ready to grow international. That's and great. so definitely I'm thinking maybe, you know, France, or maybe, you know, Italy, right. or Australia. Oh, wow. I had done a really wonderful trip to Tasmania, and drank wines there, and kayaked, and hiked, and then I was drinking a lot of the wines from the mainland, and uh, oh my god. Like, the options are just endless. They, they really are. Now, somebody was telling me that uh, Argentina has an incredible wine vacation that you can plan. Yes. Where you just go from, you know, vineyard to vineyard and you just taste all these different fabulous wines and eat all the wonderful food there. I've been to Argentina, okay. to Buenos Aires, but yes. never, you know, outside of the city. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you've experienced that or if you've heard anything about you that. Know, it's been so big on my list to go mm -hmm. and I haven't actually been there, but Mendoza, that's like the main Malbec region. So what what my goal is is like if I could craft it, and if you guys want to come, come along. Uh, <laughs> we'll bring everybody. Right <laughs> just make it a whole family event. <laughs> is um, I'd love to go do like Mendoza, 
and Patagonia. Yes. And then Chile. Yes. And, you know, and go over. Chile has amazing wines too. Yeah, Chile has incredible wines. Yeah. And Patagonia is a very up and coming wine country. And, you know, what's kind of cool in Patagonia is you can go north and then it's all this warmer outdoor, you know, hiking and biking. Then you can go really far south because it's the uh, southern hemisphere. Okay. And all these glaciers are there. Yeah. And for the warm weather, at least, you can escape our winter and go down there. Oh, that's the nice thing about it, because yes. the seasons are opposite. Completely, completely. Well, I love hearing about all this wine. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit of gossip, uh, and I want to talk about somebody who's not drinking much wine lately, and that is Jessica Simpson. Oh. She looks like she's ready to give birth at Holy any moment. Cow. I don't know if anyone has seen these photos of her, but she is... Yes. Just getting bigger and bigger by the moment. And I know that that's what women are supposed to do when they have a baby. I mean, I don't have a kid, so I don't know personally. But, man. Hey, she, like, what month is that? She, I think that this, this was just recently. But it's so crazy because we're hearing from sources that she's going to be doing, um, she's going to be spending $2 million on her delivery. So this is the new trend. Okay. Beyonce set this trend, and now all the celebrities are following suit. She's spending five hundred thousand on a birthing suite, fourteen thousand five hundred on a crib. I mean, come on! Like, what's up with that? It's just a wooden crib. Yeah. What is so special about that crib? Well, it's already stocked up with loads of monogram blankets, and not oh, she, there's not one but two cribs that she's purchasing. Oh, okay. So well, they're about seven thousand dollars each. Well worth it. Yeah, a very de good investment, especially since the child will only use it for what two or three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah, not even. Because, you know, the thing is, is then the baby will need a bigger crib. Right, exactly. Yeah. Although, I guess if she has another kid, she is planning on having a big family. Maybe the investment is No, good. I'm sorry. Hand-me-downs are not going to be acceptable. <laughs> that's family. true. That's true. <laughs> She's going to be spending $1.3 $1. on security. Oh, my She's going to hire 30 armed guards. 30 armed guards? Come on. That's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, come on. The baby's this big. I know. Why do you need 30? I know. 100000 on room service. Um, once she, oh, she's, she's hanging out, <laughs> this is so funny, she's hanging out at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and she's been just having crazy cravings. Oh. I mean, no what? offense, Jessica, but it's pretty obvious, yeah. the cravings, oh it's pretty obvious that the cravings have been taking over. No kidding, Tabby, do we have any idea of, like, what the cravings are, like, what her special treat is? You know, I don't know exactly what she's loving, but we do know that she's having a girl, and they're naming her Maxwell, which is her fiance's middle name. Oh, that's nice. Calling her Maxie for short, which is very, very cute. cute. Yeah, definitely. At least it's not like a like a, a piece of fruit or, or some item from the ground Apple. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. She is kind of going with something yeah. a little bit more, you know, normal. But actually, you'll love this because we're talking wine. She originally was thinking that maybe she would name her daughter Zinfandel. Oh, which is actually kind of a cool name. I think it's kind of cool because you can also call her like Zin. Yeah. Or Zinny. Or Fandel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of a cool name. Yeah. Or go like retro and old like Fanny. You can call her Fanny. For yeah, it. definitely. I like that. I would have gone that way. I Maybe that'll cute. be her middle name. Maxie Zinfandel. Zinfandel. Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> Simpson. I love it. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about Hunger Games. Yes. Because the movie opens uh, last week, Friday, and uh, I mean, it totally dominated the oh box my God. office. I was blown Have away. you seen it by chance? You know, I haven't seen it. I was at a friend's brunch on Sunday, and um, another friend back. was there, and um, he was there with his 14-year-old daughter. And so she was, she was a gymnast, so I was trying to get her to talk about gymnastics. Right. And then I said, well, have you seen Hunger Games? Oh, my God. Like, she totally became alive. And she's like, it's the best thing in the world. You have to see it. Like, hands on the hips. You oh, that's really, it. really so cute. she loved it. Now, did she read the book? Yes. She did read the book. She did okay. read the book, yeah. I always like hearing that, when, yeah. when children read the book and then see the movie, because so many kids these days don't really love reading. I know. And so they're just all about, you know, going the other route and just going, heading straight to the movie. So that's good. Yeah. I saw it on Sunday night. Oh, what'd you think? Um, I thought it was really good. I read all three books. Oh, you did? Okay. And, uh, and it was very, very true to the book. That's cool. I mean, it was, it really did not deviate in any way, that's, that's which I was really, really I was really shocked by, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was good. I, I have to say it was definitely really good. I'm trying to figure out where our room is, but I don't know. Gary, can you come back and help us here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, no idea. Everything's usually always set up for me, so I never really know how to get in there. Just but some technical difficulties. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm just blown away by how, how much it's well, done and... I, I mention it because we have an exclusive interview this week with uh, Amandla Stenberg, and her name is Amandla. I didn't Amandla. know. I didn't 
say that wrong, but she plays Rue <clears throat> in the book, who is Katniss Everdeen's sweet little friend in the arena during the Hunger Games. And she really is. Look at her. She's so cute, oh, she's isn't she? She's adorable. She's so adorable. And it's so interesting because she is talking to us about how she kind of just is back to her normal life. I mean, she tried out for this part. She was in the girls' bathroom at school when she found out that she got it. Oh, my God. And the girls just started screaming and running around the whole school. And she said... Uh, she said that uh, some of her, some of the boys in her class call her Hunger Games. Like, hey, Hunger Games, can you pass me the pencil sharpener? But okay. other than that, it's just school. Oh, that's really cool. School as usual. She's 13 years old, so she's very young. Yeah, but and what really a cool cute. thing to do. And, and how nice that she hasn't been like affected by it. Like she's just like gone back to like, I know, I her know. regular thing. And, I mean, this is going to be huge. This is going to go into like you know sequels and all of that other thing. Oh, it absolutely is. It's yeah. going to be a while though until we see the second installment because it takes so long for the filming, you know? Um, and the kids grow up, like like through Harry Potter. Yeah. It's so interesting to see how they took all, like the kids and like just kept moving it along but accepting that they're getting older. Right, exactly. You know? Well, I highly recommend it if you are looking to go to the movies. It's Great. pretty long. It's two and a half hours. Well, that is long, especially these days. That's really long. It's really long, but, you know, the price of movie tickets in New York City, I don't know what they cost Oof. elsewhere, but oh in New God. York City, they're up to, like, $18 or something I a know. ticket. It's so crazy. You can just go have a nice meal. Right, right. So you really or a nice bottle of wine. Uh, well, exactly. A nice glass of wine <laughs> in New York City. <laughs> so you really, do, you really do get your money's worth. Yeah. Oh, two and a half hours. That's great. Um, so, yeah, so I really, I really did enjoy it, I must say. Um, there's another story. You know, I was on the Today Show on Monday morning talking about Kim Kardashian and this flower bombing incident. I don't know if you heard about this. I have not. But she was on the red carpet at an event. It was, well, I'm going to say it was for charity because it was for charity, uh -huh. but it was also to promote her fragrance. So okay. it was for Dress for Success and then also to promote her fragrance. She was on the red carpet in the middle of doing an interview, and a woman ran up and threw a bag of flour on top of her and okay. yelled, Fur Hag. And so, oh my God. Right. And so PETA has released uh, a you know, whole long list of uh, <laughs> BS love. Maybe her computer got a virus. Yes, I, I think that is a good way of putting it. Is this working, Gary? You're on. You're on the air again. Okay. okay. All right. We're on. I think we were on before, but either way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so PETA released a statement, and it's this whole big debacle, and Kim Kardashian is thinking she might want to press charges now. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really crazy. So That is insane. Um, Alberta is saying, Dorothy, you're golden. Okay, good. I'm glad that everything <laughs> is back on track. I don't really know what happened. We went totally dark. Um, so, so then I guess were we not live this whole time? Can uh, somebody tell me? Hmm. I don't know. You were recording. We were recording, but we lost our audience. Aw, oh, too bad. Okay. No, the audience, believe it or not, stayed and waited for your return. <laughs> wow. Stand us a little bit. You guys are a Have great that. audience. <laughs> That's awesome. BS love, I hear well now. Okay, great. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, oh my gosh, and in the midst of all of this chaos... We're really actually running out of time. It's so amazing how quickly this you goes. Know, time isn't it? goes so fast. I know. I now know. I want to talk about um, your. Do you have a website? You said I do. It's um, it's uh, wanderlustwining.com. Okay. And um, and then my Twitter is uh, Steph Jackenthal. Okay. And um, and then S T E F. S T E F. Right? Okay. J A C K E N T H A L. All right, love it. And um, and then yeah, and then if you go to uh, stephjack.com. That's all where um, I, because I also run a wine tasting company, so you can learn all about that. Okay. And if anybody wants to know about like just absolutely fabulous like wine vacations or trips, like always feel free to email me and I'll get right back to you. And um, I've been working with a lot of wedding people, oh. so people who are getting married and they want to do like really cool like you know honeymoons or bachelorettes or or something like that. So um, yeah, I totally, I just think it's it's so much fun. I mean, we all love wine, right? We do. And, and then we all love to be fit. Right. And so, like, what's better than just go hang out and play in wine country? Right. And, uh, and so this is, like, your one-stop guide to anywhere in the United States. And where is this sold? This is sold all over um, Barnes & Noble, um, um, barnesandnoble.com, you know, on Amazon.com. I mean, pretty much anywhere. You can go to my website, wanderlustwining.com. That's fantastic. And buy it. Yeah, and uh, it's available on ebook, and then we re-released, um, because there's four chapters in the book on different areas of California, 
that we um, we did a, its own little California version. Oh, nice! And then if people are traveling, let's say you, let's just say you're going out to uh, Washington State, mm. you can just download the Washington State uh, on your Nook or Kindle, and it's um, it's a bargain. It's wow. less expensive than the whole kit and caboodle here. Wow, that's yeah. so smart. Yeah, we decided to. We really wanted to make it user friendly, you know. Of course, because, yeah. Because um, you know, we want people to enjoy. It's supposed to be fun. Of course, right? of like, course. I would love to have you do some kind of a guest blog on my blog. I have a blog, theblondeandblue.tumblr.com. We love that. And it's a lot of fun. It's all fashion and celebrities and vacations and beautiful things and, you know, that sort of thing. And certainly we can come up with a few beautiful images of right. some of the destinations Absolutely. in your book. Absolutely. <laughs> there are many. I think picking it might be more of a I know, thing. I know. But maybe we could do something, you know, with the spring coming and people thinking about taking vacations yes. and that sort of thing. I love that. Yeah, that would be, be a lot great. of fun. It would be a lot of fun. Um... Wander, Maybe we can go remotely with her. Sorry? Maybe we can go remotely with her, do the show remotely. That would be Ooh, amazing. Why would we do that? <laughs> that sounds excellent. We can either go to Long Island wine country or just get on an airplane and go. I am all for it. I pack fast. <laughs> <laughs> I've I got the it. guide, too, so we can just pick a destination and it's all set up. I love it. I love yeah. it. Um, all right, well, I think we have to sign off because we're out of time. Oh. It's so sad, and we, we lost we lost our room for a little bit, but that's okay. Um, thank you so much. Thank big, you. big thank you to my special guest, Stephanie Jackenthal, the author of this fabulous book, Wanderlust Whining, everything that you need to know about going on wine vacations and the cool spots to check out. It's just a complete one-stop shop for everything wine. Well, thank right. you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah it I is. really, really it's, appreciate um, it. You know, fun, delicious wine holidays. I love it. And we need to set you up with uh, with my other friend that I had on the show that does the Daily Sip, which is oh. a wine um, it was a wine website and then a newsletter that goes out. That would be and great. that's a lot of fun, too. So maybe we can connect you, Let's too. Let's do and that. And we can promote Wanderlust Wine. I, I just that. love bringing people I together. That. That's what it's about, you know? Uh, and uh, also... The new issue of In Touch Weekly, pick it up on stands today. Lots of really juicy gossip. Uh, we talked a little bit about Jessica Simpson's $2 million delivery. Uh, Dancing with the Stars, if there's any Dancing with the Stars uh, fans out there. Big shocking secrets, drug habits, uh, sex, sh sex shockers, all sorts of things. And uh, anyway, big thank you to our guests. Thank you for sticking with us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Dorothy Lauren. And also my blog, um, The Blondes in Blue. I'm not wearing blue today, but no. my headshot and my headshot I wear blue. So I, and I love the color blue. blue so is great color. the blonde and blue dot tumblr dot com. Remember that dot tumblr. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much, and we will see you right back here next Thursday, two thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a good one. Bye.